as chair, could I ask, well, I'm going to have to show this defendant some photographs. Is it possible to unshackle one, one of his hands? Thank you. Could you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this matter now pending shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got Yes. All right, can you scoot your chair up a little bit, and you can put your hand down and speak directly to the microphone so the jury and, and the judge and the reporter can hear you clearly. Um, could you state your name, please? Ron D. Um, and can you spell both your first and your middle name for the court reporter? Um, first name, Ron E. M. A. Um, what name is Giovanni G. I. O. V. A. E. N. I. And how, how old are you, Mr. Moss? 35 weeks. All right. How long, where do you currently reside? Um, Smith State Park. Right. And are you currently serving a sentence at Smith State Park? Yes, sir. What sentence are you currently serving? Uh, life without. Life without what? Well, life without what? Is that in? Is that because of a, of a guilty plea that you entered in regard to the case you're in court here today on? Yes, sir. And what did you plead guilty to? Um, child cruelty and consumer death. Right. And who was the victim in those cases? Um, my daughter. Um, Gabrielle Moss. And do you remember when you actually took that? When you actually entered that plea of guilty? Uh, I'm not familiar with the, I know it was in the winter August 2015, I know that much, I can't remember the day. How do you know Tiffany Moss? Um, she is my wife. Are you currently married? Um, yes. Um, when did y'all meet? Um, we met, let's say around, when I first met her, I want to say around 2007, okay. at the church. Which church was that? Um, Freedom Christian Church. Were you attending that church? Yes. Um, with who did you? Who do you usually go to church with? Um, me and my daughter. Who's your daughter? Um, um, and how did you meet? How did you meet the defendant? Um, I met her through a friend that knew uh, that knew her. All right. Um, did y'all strike up a friendship? Uh, at that time, it was, yeah, it was just like, you know, casual. Okay. At that time, because uh, I just met him like friends, we would go out to eat and so on at the uh, group at the church. For about how long did that casual relationship last? Um, it was uh, more, more like an acquaintance than, you know, she was off and on. Mm -hmm. I think she was in school at that time. Right. Let, me ask, let me go back and ask you a little bit about Amani. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm getting a little bit out of order. But tell, uh, can you tell me when Amani was born? Yes, she was born April 23rd, uh, 2003. And did you at that time have a relationship with Amani's mother? Yes. Um, where is Amani's mother now? Do you know? Honestly, I do not know. Um, at some point, did you go to court and get sole custody of yes, sir. of Amani? Yeah. Did you have a document that terminated the parental rights of Amani's mother? Yes, I had a legitimate, uh, I think legitimate mice through this, I know it through the court. I just can't even pronounce it right now. Okay. Said so legitimate, uh, legitimized. I can't say. It. And did her, did her mother surrender her rights in in that same court case? Yes, sir. Did you, did did Amai's mother ever have any relationship with her, other than giving birth to her? Um, uh, I said at one time we were staying together, but after that, it was more like uh, her using the key she has upon. All right. Um. Do you know whether or not, during the time after you uh, got sole custody, did you ever give her mother any visitation, or did Amani ever go see her mother? Um, once I did that, uh, the location that she was living at, um, the number that she gave me, she was gone, and I had no way of getting in touch with her. Okay. So, is it fair to say that 
for a number of years prior to 2013, Amati had no contact with her birth mother. True. And so as a result of that, did you feel free to engage in a, a start a relationship with the defendant? Yes. Um, you weren't tied down or living with anybody or anything like that, were you? No, I was just uh, living with uh, Rudy Kirkland. And who's Rudy Kirkland? Um, he's a friend and, and someone I call and consider a cousin. Right. Um, but he's not related to you by blood? Not by blood. Did y'all grow up together, you and Rudy? Yeah. And is he someone that you confide in? Yes, sir. Um, is he someone that you trust? Yeah. And how long have y'all been friends? Um, since I was about, when I met him, about 13, about 13 when I met him. Okay. So, Damn. tell the jury about after you had the, you had this casual acquaintance relationship with the defendant. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you said that you would go out to dinner with, with groups of people from the church. That is correct. At some point... Did that relationship move from casual to something more serious? Um, that was later on. About how long? Um, I want to say 2009. Uh, during, I say late 2008, I'm not, I'm not really trying to get a date, but I know that's about around that time frame. So would it be fair to say it was approximately two years? Yeah. And during the two-year period between 2007 and 2009, did the defendant ever meet your daughter, Imani? Yes, all the time. And did, did she and Imani seem to get along? Yes, from the, um, from the moment at church, yeah. Okay. Was there any problem? Did she seem to express any problems seeing you in a romantic way because of the fact that you had a child? No, I don't think so. And did she ever express any concerns about getting into a relationship with you that you had because you had a child? No, sir. And so you said in 2009 things started to get a little more serious. Tell yes, us about what you mean by that and how the relationship progressed. Um, 2009, um, you know, we uh, it started out with a date. I received a phone call. You know, she was asking me out on a date. Okay. And we went from a date and went on a couple of dates and went on a couple of dates and then we uh, ended up getting real serious. Okay. And by real like serious? A committed relationship. So you decided to get a boyfriend. I'm yeah. sorry. You did. How did you make that decision? How did you make that decision to be committed? Did you just tell each other or? Yeah. And, and so did the, the committed relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend, I think you used the words. Yes, sir. Did that progress along? Um, for a while. And uh, then um, during 2009, I know I proposed. So we were dating 2009, I want to say we were dating about seven, maybe eight months. Maybe eight or nine, I can't remember from the time frame, but I know it was around that before I proposed. So in 2009, you were ready to you were ready to pull the trigger. You were ready for me. Yeah. And did the defendant accept your proposal? Yes, sir. When were you married? Um, uh, July 2009. And where did that happen? Happened in Freedom Christian Church. So what did did you move in together before you were married or after you got married? After we got married. And where did you first live when you were first married? Um, we first were married, first we were living where I was currently, you know, rooming with Rudy Kirkland. I can't really remember the address. I know it's in Lawrenceville. Okay, that's good. That's good okay. enough. You don't need the specific. So it was, it, was it you, Tiffany, Amani, and Rudy? Yes, and his daughter. So how long did that last, do you think? That was like, I think I moved in, what's the name, 2010, uh, Trooper Cove, uh, 2995 Trooper Cove at the house. And we moved under, you know, when I was rooming with Rudy. Okay. We got our own place. When you had your own place, were you, were you working at that time? Yes. Where were you working? Um, at that time, I was working at a company, um, you know, it changed the name, it's 
KGP, but at that time, the name was Embark Logistics. And what type of work did you do? Um, warehousing. All right. Port driver. At the time you moved into your own house back in 2010, what type of schedule did you work? Um, at that time, I worked in the day shift from um, 6.30 to 3.30. Okay. And was, was Amani going to school? Yes, sir. And was Tiffany working? Yes, she was a, a, a pre-K teacher. Um, are you aware whether or not Tiffany has a college degree? Um, yeah, I, she told me she had a college degree. And was, was working as the pre-K teacher part of what she had gotten her degree in? Uh, I think so. How were, how were things between you? It was good. It was a honeymoon phase. Right. Did, you, did you feel like you had enough money and, and uh, with your incomes and, and that things were pretty good? Yeah, it was easy. And so what happened then? When did you move out of that house? Um, when I am moving out of that house, I want to say... November, or was it 2000, I think, was it 2011? I think, I'm not for sure, I don't want to, 10 or 11. Okay. Um, and why did, where did you move to? Um, I moved with my mother-in-law. Okay. Why did y'all move to your mother-in-law's house? Um, money got tight. Money got tight. And why did money get tight? At that time, I was the only one working. Okay. And... Well, why were, why wasn't Tiffany working? Um, she ended up losing her job. Um, at some point, either when you lived with your mother-in-law or at the at the house mm -hmm. in 2011, did Tiffany get pregnant? Yes. And did she eventually give birth to your son, Tristan? That's correct. During the time she was either pregnant or when she at, right after she gave birth, did she work at all? Um, no. And with her not working, what did you feel like her responsibility within the couple was? Stay home alone. And did you feel like it was her responsibility to take care of the children? Yes, sir. And, and who, what were the children that were living with you at that point? At that time, uh, um, in 2010, it was uh, Tristan, my son, and uh, Imani. And you were living at, at your mother-in-law's house? Yes. Is that Pearly Bashir? Yes. How long did you live at, at Miss Bashir's house? From that time frame, from my, to the end of 2010 to, I want to say the summer of 2011. We stayed, that's about, I say we moved out 2010, November from Tropico. And then we ended up moving with um, my mother-in-law in 2011, and I think we left that summer, I'm going to say June, okay. when I signed another lease at another place. Uh, you, I, I think you just said you signed a lease at another place. Was that apartment? Apartment. Uh, apartment, yes, sir. And where was that apartment located? Uh, Club Drive. So when you got to Club Drive, who was in the house with you? Who lived at, who lived at that apartment? Uh, it was me, Timmy, uh, Iman, and uh, Tristan. Why did you move out of Pearlie's house? Um, it was really tight at that time. Tight? As far as room. room. Okay. So uh, there's a, there were a bunch of people in the house? Yes. Who was living in the house for that first time you moved in with Pearlie? Um, it was me, Timmy, Tristan, and Imani, and her mother. During that period of time, how was Imani's health? It was good, man. Did she ever exhibit any signs of, of not wanting to eat or an eating disorder or anything along those lines? No, sir. Was she an active child? Yes, sir. Um, did she do okay in school? Yes, sir. When you moved into the club drive, the club drive apartment, was she still in school? Yes. And were you still working the day shift? Yes. Um, what had happened that made you, well, I, I understand the room, but 
obviously then the, the club drive situation was money tight then? Yes, it was too kind of tight. Um, did you feel like you could make it on what you were what you were earning? Yes. So how long did that last at club drive? Uh, until my leaf was up and I ended up moving back uh, with the mother-in-law. Well, why? Um, to me, I got pregnant again. And who? And was that with your child, with your daughter Emma? Yes, sir. So when did you find out that? Tiffany was pregnant with Emma. Um, I'm trying. I can't really remember. I just know she said she was pregnant. And um, let me state this. Um, I know in the first pregnancy it was hard. She was like on bed rest. So I'm, I'm really predicting as soon as she'll be on bed rest with Emma also. So when your lease expired in, at Club Drive, you moved back into Miss Bashir's house, right? Yes. How long did you stay there? Um, I ended up staying there until 2013. Uh, I want to say September. And then where did you go in September of 2013? Um, uh, I think Veranda Chase Drive. I think that's the address. I can't remember. And is that the apartment where you were taken into custody? Yes, sir. I want to go back to 2010. Um, do you recall where you were interviewed by the Gwinnett County Police Department in regard to an issue with Imani? Yes. Tell the jury how that, how you found out about that and how that happened. Um, I was at work and um, I get a phone call from my, I think a detective, I can't remember saying I had to come to the police station. They didn't tell me what. They just said I need me as an emergency. I think Batania said, Batania to your child. So I just left work, let my manager know, and I just hopped in the car and just drove all the way down there. Right. While you were at the police department, did you find out that your wife had been accused of, of beating your child? Yes, when I got down there. And did you give a statement to the police in that regard? Uh, yes, I spoke with the uh, detective. And did you become aware that she was eventually arrested? Yes, uh, she got arrested there. And do you know whatever happened with that case? Um, to the plea of probation. Five years to my knowledge. Tell me what life was like after that at your house. <laughs> Was Tiffany allowed to work as a teacher after that? No. Did Tiffany ever work after 2010? No. Um, so, it's, it's, what did she do? Stayed in the house. Stayed in Roy's house? Yeah. And where we live, she stayed in the house. Did you feel like her, her job at that point was to take care of the kids? Yes. Um, at, during the time you were at Pearlie's house, did you ever see any issues with Amani in terms of her weight? Or No. Um, did you ever see any problems between Amani and Tiffany while you were at Pearlie's? Yes. Tell me about those. Um, ever since, uh, going back to 2010, ever since then, it was like a, like a love-hate relationship. Explain to the jury what you mean by a love-hate relationship. Um, you know, her and Ronnie was like, um, it was always something they couldn't get along. Did you ever know if Tiffany from 2010, after 2010, to discipline Amani? No, not to the incident. Right. I, I want to ask you, when, when I say discipline... Okay. What, a uh, discipline a child, what does that mean to you? At that time, uh, spanking. But, are there other ways to discipline children? Yes. Uh, is setting the bed without their supper a way of disciplining a child? No, it's not. Um, is putting them in a corner and putting them in timeout a discipline for a child? Yes. So you said that, when you said that, that, 
You said that Tiffany didn't didn't discipline Amani. Are you aware of whether or not she used any of the other things other than spanking to correct her bank? Yes, she's, um, after we, well, let me go back. When we had the uh, incident where she spanked the money in 2010, we had to take a uh, class. I took a, they called the fatherhood program, and I think she had to take anger management, and then we had in-home counseling. Because at the time, I was not aware of the other form of discipline, because, you know, I grew up from the old school, you know, you got a spanking, and that was it. So you learned about other forms yes, of discipline? but at the time, I didn't know, but, you know, spanking, and... So did, after 2010, did you decide that you were going to use the other forms of discipline other than spanking? Yes. And do you know whether or not Tiffany did that, too? Yes, best of my knowledge, I think she did. All right. While, and so you moved in in the summer, in, did you say in September of 2013? Yeah. To the apartment? Yes, sir. Um, where did you live, did you ever live with your mother? Um, yes, that was, um, you talking about me and Tiffany or this? You and Tiffany and the no, children? No, sir. Not the three of you didn't live there? No. Did Amani ever live with your mother? Yes, during the uh, incident in 2010. And after that, was was Amani placed with your mother? No, sir. Well, how did she end up over there then? You said at my mom's house? Yeah, how did, how did, I, I mean... Okay, how did you get in 2010, um, we had the spanking incident. Tiffany uh, spanked Amani, she had uh, whips and stuff all on her arms and back. The legs are dealt with. Okay. But how did uh, the question was how did she how did she end up staying at your mother's house after? Um, defects. We moved out, the, out of our home and put it in with grandma. And how long did she live with grandma after the 2010 incident? I want to say about I want to say six months. Did you or Tiffany ever try to, did you go to court to get her back, or did you, or were you just allowed to by defect? No, I had to go, um, it was uh, required for me to, you know, well, it was required for Tiffany to take any management and their own counseling. The other program was a uh, volunteer. I didn't have to do it, I just did it. The, the one that you yeah. talked about, yeah. that's clear. Yeah. Right, and so after you completed that, were you allowed to get a money back? Yeah, after several supervised visits. Um, did you ever talk to your mom about Amani staying with her? Yeah, I have. And what, how did you feel about that? Um, I didn't really mind. Right. But I, but I'm talking about after 2010. Um, did your mom ever ask for Amani to come and live with her? Yes, she yeah. And what did you say to that? Um, I, I, in my pride, I said I was trying to prove something to my mom that I can do it, and I said no. And so you got Amani back when? Um, I got her back in 2010. And so did she move with you from Pearlie's house to the Vernon to Chase apartment? Yes. At the apartment, did she have her own room? Yes, she did. Now, tell me about your work situation when you moved into the Rand apartment. What were you doing? At, I mean, um, when I moved to the Rand to Chase, only way I had to do it, I had to end up getting two jobs. Okay. Tell the jury about your about the jobs. Um, first job was a uh, KGP logistic warehouse on the Fort Lip operator. And um, Rudy Kirkland um, uh, introduced me to one of his friends, and I ended up working at Angry Express. It's a uh, four-lift driver. They also opened up. Tell, me, tell the jury what your schedule was while you lived at the Veranda Chase apartment. Um, on typical Monday to Friday, um, from 6.30 to the first job, KGP, 6.30 to 3.30. Able to express, it's a little bit different. It starts at six, and it depends on if you finish up the work in order for you to go home. So I say average probably one or one thirty. 
sometimes. Yeah. In the morning. In the morning. Uh, how long did it take you to get to your job? Um, we was flying off for the old work, uh, I think at yeah, old work off road. So it was about, I want to say, 15 minutes. So what time did you have to leave your house in the morning to get to your first job? First job, because it was on the other side of Swanee, I would have to leave, to be on there, to be on time, I'd say 5 in the morning, just to be on time because it would be traffic. And what time would you get home from your first job? Uh, I want to say a little bit, probably with traffic at the end, I'd say about 4.30, almost 5. And then what time would you have to leave for your second job? About 5.30, because I had to be there at 6. And then what time would you get home at night? Anywhere from 1 to 1.30. And then what did you do from 1.30 to 5.30? I would try to do get some sleep and get up and do it again. And when did you, did you start the second job about the time that you moved into the apartment? I started the second job before I got the apartment. Because I couldn't do it um, with my income because um, I didn't apartments, or most apartments, you have to make three times the rent. And if I uh, tried to get it with the one job, I wasn't able to make three times the rent. So, is it fair to say you were at your house about three hours a day during the waking hour? Yes. And was that Monday through Friday? Yes, sir. What would you do on the weekend? Weekend, I wouldn't do much of the time I'd be in the uh, house with the kids. What was Tiffany doing on the weekend? Um, weekend was like an uh, outlet for her to get a break. Would she go out with her friends? Yeah, or she might be over there with her mother uh, or her sister. And, and that, was that okay with you at that point? Yeah. During the times, particularly after you moved into the apartment, during the times that you were at work, would you ever get communications from, well, first of all, were you allowed to get cell phone calls or telephone calls while you were at work? Oh, I was not allowed to have my cell phone, but I, you know, I had it with me anyway. Would you get calls from Tiffany during the day? Yes. Um, did they ever talk about Amani? A lot of times they were, text messages. And what, would you, what were the types of text messages you would get? Um, um, one incident said Imani, um, boo-boo and put it on the wall. Um, got another, got another call, take me to Imani, um, boo again and put it in the oatmeal, in the food. Um, uh, get, I get, just going down the list, different things, or Imani tried to run away. Would it be fair to say that a lot of the text that you got had to do with <coughs> Tiffany claiming that Monty, uh, Monty was was misbehaving? Yes. Um, so you're her father. What did you do about that? I didn't do absolutely nothing. Did you believe your wife when she told you that? I did. Why? I don't know. I had questions, but I did. Um, did you ever seek out more family counseling for your child? I didn't. Did you I, ever take her to a doctor to see if she was sick? I did one time. It was in, um, saying with uh, my mother-in-law, but I didn't stick to the appointment. So you really didn't, didn't take her to the I didn't really. I went to one thing. Um, and when you say that Tiffany was telling you that Amani boo-booed, that means she went to the bathroom, right? Yes, feces defecated. And did you ever see evidence of feces on the wall of your apartment? No. Uh, um, did you ever see a bowl with oatmeal and feces in it, in the sink? No. Um, at that point, had you noticed that Amani was sick? Yes. Tell me what tell me what you mean what I mean by sick or what you mean by sick. Well we um moved to Veranda Chase and we said it wasn't that she had had a growth spurt but she was thin but she started to get thinner and we moved to uh, Veranda Chase. 
whose responsibility did you feel at that point was to feed your child? Um, during the weekday, uh, Tiffany, and mostly on the weekend, it was me. I, and on the weekends when you were with Amani, did she eat? Yes, she would, she would try to eat a lot. Actually, on the weekends, she would like try to gouge. You mean gorge? Yeah, yeah gorge. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I don't mean to correct you. Okay. I don't want to change your word. Okay. That's not what you meant to say. Um, and that was during the basically the summer of 2013, right? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. I'm almost going into the fall of September. You moved into the apartment yeah, in September. September. So it would have been in the fall of 2013, right? Yeah. Um, did Amani get thinner? Yes. And did she did she seem like she had uh, lost her ability to to be active? Yes. Now, during the time you lived at Veranda Chase, did you and Tiffany have date night, or did you go out? No, not really. And did you ever take your two younger kids out of the apartment? Well, I didn't. Who did, did anyone take uh, out? Yeah, they usually go over there. I know the other two would go over there on Grandma's house. And, and while the other two were, when you say Grandma, do you mean Pearly? Yeah. What was Tiffany's relationship with your mom? It wasn't a good relationship. Did they ever go and see your mom, who's her other grandmother? time they saw in a matter of fact they came over when we was living with um, my mother-in-law my mother came to see uh, Emma when she was born yeah and uh, bought Tristan a birthday present remember, do you remember your mom talking to you about about Imani then yes she did and what did she ask you she asked me she said she's thin and she need to come stay with me and what did you what did you answer in my pride, trying to prove my mother wrong, I said no. Deep down in the heart, I felt like it was probably the best place, but I didn't do it. At Mother's Day of 2013, had Imani's hair changed? Yes, she had an incident. She had, um, well, I didn't see it, but, uh, you know, we told that she had cut, you know, cut her hair with some scissors. Who told you that? Tiffany. Um, did you ever ask Imani how her hair got cut? cut? She, she never go in detail. She said, I, yeah, I did it. She never said why she did it. She said, I did it. Every time I asked her, like, she told me you did this, and the mommy said, yeah, I did it. And, I mean, did she seem angry or defiant? Uh -huh. So, at that point, did you believe her? Kind of did, and I kind of didn't. Did you hear, did you happen to hear... Tiffany, make a statement to your mom about your daughter's hair? Um, I don't think I heard, no, I, didn't, I, I think I got a phone call, but I didn't hear the statement. Now, when you say a phone call, it, it's like later after you talk about Mother's Day, right? Right. Yeah, I got it. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear the statement, but it, it was uh, said to me when, you know, after I left, I got a phone call from my sister. And she, was your sister very happy when she called you? No. Um, let's go back, uh, starting in, in October the 24th of 2013. Did you work that day? Yes, I did. Did you work your first job? Yes, both jobs. When you got home from your first job, did you see Imani on that day? Um, on the 24th. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Where was she? She was in a, she was in a bedroom, laid out, um, deceased. I wanna, I wanna make sure because, in one of your prior statements, you said that on the twenty fourth, mm -hmm. that you found her in the bathroom. Does that help, Rick? Okay, okay. I'm right. going back. I'm thinking about twenty fourth. Right. On the twenty fourth. Was there an occasion where you came home and Amani was in a bathtub? Yes. That was um, that, that day I went to work at the first job. It's KGB Logistics. I 
having car trouble with the um, Chevy Trailblazer. Uh, I think it was a water hose or whatnot. And uh, I kept running hot. So coming home, I thought I had it fixed. Because, you know, I came out and said, your, your antifreeze is all on the um, ground. So I had to put water in there. I come home. Then I, I'm trying to work on it. And then I go and drive it to uh, Avery Express. And I get it and start running hot as I pull into the driveway. And I went and talked to the manager. He said, you go on, if you, can, you can't get home, you go and fix it. And we just give you the day off. We got somebody to fill in. So I take the car back. I know I'm talking to the woman. I take the car back. Take I take the car back. Um, it took me a while to get home because I had to keep stopping, getting water, stopping, getting water because it kept running hot. It cut off, cooled off. Finally get to the house, but I never went in. I just called and said, I'm down here trying to work on the car. I got to fix it. If I can't fix it, I can't get a word. If I can't get a word, I can't provide. Who did you call to say all that? Uh, Tiffany. She was in the house. So you didn't go to the house when you when you moved your first job? You didn't go into the apartment? Yeah, I did. I ran in. Then I didn't have enough time to get a nap in. Then I just ran in and changed because I had to wear a different uniform. Couldn't wear the uh, other clothes that I wear at the first job. I had to actually put on a uniform, so I put on a uniform, get in the car, try to run and make it to Avery, and I get there, and I wasn't able to stay because the car was messing up, and the manager told me to just go back to the house. I go back to the house. I'm trying to fix the, uh, the water hole. I'm down there. I end up staying down there until we got dark. I want to say it had to be late. I want to say about 10, 30, maybe 11 o'clock. So when you went back into your apartment, is that when you found Amani in the bathtub? Yeah, I went in there. I know I, she, I, she was giving me pictures. She sent me a picture. Texas said she was going to feed the kids, uh, Tiffany. Tiffany. And, and in, in those pictures, she said that she was that she had fed the kids? Yeah, on the phone, she said I fed all the kids. So I'm, at that point, when I'm coming out, I think they all sleep. I come in. I go to the, uh, I think, the little laundry room and put my toolbox in. I go um, to the kitchen, um, said something about a new dish that she made. Go to the refrigerator. I come out of the kitchen, and uh, Timmy tells me to come here. She said something wrong with the money. I leave there. I go into the bathroom. She's in the tub. And um, she's shaking like she's having a seizure. So what did you do? Um, I didn't go to my first mind. I, I said I need to go take a 911. I take it to the hospital. Did Tiffany have anything to say about when you said that? Say we can't. Did she explain to you why you couldn't take your daughter to the hospital? She was real, real thin. Yeah, but did, Tiffany, had... Tiff, did Tiffany tell you why you couldn't take your daughter to the hospital? No, she didn't give me why. Now... Let's stop there and go back four or five, four or five days into October. At some point, did you come home and discover Amani had been burned? Yes. Tell me, if, tell the jury about that. Um, matter of fact, I get a, I think I got a phone call at work. Um, said, uh, or was it a text me? I think it was either one of them, but I, I got a phone call. I think I got a text too that she had, uh, she was. Say she was cooking something with a pot and she spilled the water on her stomach. Imani was cooking? Imani, yeah. Timmy said Imani was cooking. And that she spilled a pot? Yeah. Um, did Tiffany tell you what was in the pot? Um, no. I said hot water. So you went, when you went home, did you, take, did you look at your daughter? And, and yeah. What did you see? Uh, she was, had a skull on the stomach, like a uh, round little skull part on the stomach. And, and on her. did you say we ought to take her to the doctor? Yeah, but we didn't, I didn't do it. So on the 24th, you found her in the, in the bathtub, and did it look to you like Amani was having a seizure? Uh, that's my knowledge. Yes, I know you're not a doctor, yeah. but what did she look like? She was, uh, she was, she was sh shaking, like, you know. Could she speak? 
Uh, she was trying to say something. She wasn't speaking much. She was just, you know. Were, were her eyes moving at all? They, they were going uh, from left to right. So, after Tiffany said we can't call the doctor, we can't take her to the hospital, what'd you do with her? <sighs> Kept her in the room. In which room? In her room. I mean, did you put her on the floor or? Where did you put her? Um, on a mat, on a mattress, and um, and on the floor. Um, Amon, did she ever get up out of that bed? No, she didn't. After the seizure thing, no, she didn't. Did you go in and check on her in, in the days that followed? Yes. Um, I was trying to. Uh, Yes, I did. And um, I was trying to feed her through a star, uh, uh, feed her through a spoon. With infant, what? Okay. What were you trying to feed? Infant meal, like a like a liquid diet, but it wasn't working. What do you mean it wasn't working? It wasn't working. Well, I mean, did she spit it back up, or did she not be able to swallow it, or did it spill on the bed? And when you say not working, uh, when I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about her weight. Okay. As far as you know, she was swallowed, but it wasn't you know as far as. But I'm saying it was beyond repair. Um, at that time, was she able to get up herself and go to the bathroom? No, sir. Um, was she going to the bathroom in the bed? Yes, sir. Did you ever see any any uh, sores or, or anything like that on her? Like dead sores or just sores? Just sores around her bottom or sores uh, from laying in the bed, anything like that? Uh, she had, she had, far the sca- uh, when she got scarred, it, it was um, healing around her stomach, far the, the scab. Could she talk to you at that point? She went talking. Um, um, would you agree that she was in pretty bad shape at that time? She was in bad. She was in bad state. Amon, did you take her to the doctor then? I did not take her to the doctor, sir. Why not? Uh, I really can't explain it. I, I was trying to. Uh, I was trying to fix something. Like I said, you know, I'm not God, but I, I'm trying to fix something here real quick. Irre- irreversible or beyond repair. What I should have did, oh, go ahead. I, I, no, go ahead. Finish your sentence. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, what I should have did was when I said, when the incident happened, I called 911. And when I didn't, it was, I put myself in bad mind. Sir. What was Tiffany telling you about what you needed to do at that point? Um, she was saying that we can't go, we can't call 911, we can't do that. Um, we got to hide the body. Well, what she um, tell, why did she, why did she tell you that we can't call 911? I mean, you're this child's father. Um, cause she said, uh, no more probation, I don't want to go to jail. Did she say anything about losing your other children? Yes. I want to go now. So from the tw- the twenty fourth, you put her, you put him on in bed. Yeah. On the twenty eighth of October of two thousand and thirteen, did Tiffany notify you somehow that Amani had died? Uh, yes, she called me at work. That was, was that was that the do you remember was it the twenty eighth or the 29th? Uh, that they trying to uh, judge the week. Think about it in terms of okay. was it from one or two? Was it two or three days before Halloween? Might have been a day before Halloween, or if not Halloween, I'm trying to think before Halloween. And how did how did you get the notification that Amani had died? It was on a Tuesday. I know, my one. Um, it was uh, through a phone call. 
Right. Where were you when you got the phone call? I was at work. And did you actually speak to Tiffany, or did you just get a text? Um, I think I talked to her on the phone. And what did she tell you? Uh, she said uh, she's gone. She didn't say too much. She said she's gone. So when I came home... Wait, wait, wait. When you okay, came okay. home, did you okay. leave work? I did not leave work. I couldn't leave work. I left work after I got out. I tried to leave early, but she didn't let me get a half day. So I actually left work on a regular time. At 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the afternoon? Yes, sir. And what did you do when you got home? Um, at this point, I'm devastated. I'm really messed up, uh, honestly. I go in the room, and from that time, you know, I usually take a nap. I was in the room with, um, with a Imani body. It took about time to go back and go to work to Avery. All right, let me ask you, did you do anything to confirm that she had died? She was dead. How could you tell? Um, I've been in a lot of funerals, and I, I can tell, you know. She was cold. Her essence was there. Um, her eyes, she was gone. Where was Tiffany when you came in the house? When I walked in, um, the other two kids, when Tristan was running around playing, he came in. Um, I'm really messed up at the time. He said, Daddy, Daddy, I walked past him. And I'm in the pack and play, and she was watching TV. Did you have any conversation with her when you when you walked by her watching TV? No, not at that moment. <clears throat> and after you went into the room and saw that Imani was dead, did you go out and talk to Tiffany? Uh, yes, yeah, that was uh, that was after the time after I came from in there. Yeah. Yeah. What did what y'all talk about? Talking about concealing her death, um, making it like since she had a history of running away, make it seem like she ran away. But Amon, let me let me okay. ask you: When you discovered your daughter dead, what did you want to do? Nine one one. What but did Tiffany want to do? She wanted to hide it. Um, there's a question that has to be asked. Why did you agree to that? I was trying to, uh, don't make any sense. I guess I love, I was trying to fix the problem that I couldn't fix. I was trying to save her, but I couldn't save her. I couldn't save my daughter. I can't explain it. Were you afraid of losing your other kid? That too. Um, so Tiffany came up with a plan that you had to hide the body. Did you go to work for your second job that day? Yes, I did. And when you got off the work of the second day, the second job, what did you do? Um, at the second job, at Avery, I went back. I went. I went back home, and you know, you probably get asked, you know, manager. I was out of it. As far as you know, sleep. I just went myself. And um, you talking about the day that we... Um, the day you learned that Imani was dead. The day that you... I went, I went both. Dead. Yeah. What did you do after you went to your second shift, your second job? Um, I went to work. Worked that shift. Um, almost had an incident. Um, and I almost ran the forklift off the... It's an open dock. I almost ran it, ran it off the dock. And when, I, go ahead. When you got, but what I want to focus on is okay. when you got home from your job. I, I understand you were yeah. you were upset, mm -hmm. but when you got home from your job, let me ask you: was was Amani still in the bed? Uh, you got home. No, she was on. Uh, she was um, laying on the blanket on the floor when I we were talking about when I came home from my first job, right? Well, I no, we you didn't tell me. Oh. So when you came over your first job, where I, yeah. I think okay. you earlier testified that that you went in and checked on her. I don't think yeah. I asked you what okay. she was. Where was she? And she was on the floor um, on a blanket. 
And then you asked me uh, um, how did I know she was dead. I was saying she was cold. And then no movement in her eyes. She was lifeless. So when you got home from your second job, where was Amani then? Uh, she actually was still in the room on the blanket that the door was closed. And where was Tiffany? Um, when I came home for the night, she was in the bed in the uh, back room sleeping, and the other kids were sleeping in that room when I came home from the night job. So that night, did you move Amani from the floor of her bedroom? Um, or did you just leave her there? Well, that night, I actually left, uh, I left her in there for, I think, one more day. Then I moved her uh, to the little computer in the way the apartment is set up as a uh, computer room. All right, was that the next day? Yes, sir. So, when you got home and saw her on the floor and Tiffany was asleep in the bed, did you... Did you go to bed that night? Yeah, but uh, the, the thing is, I don't know if I said I said it. Is uh, when I came home late, see, I wasn't sleeping in the room with Tiffany, so I used to sleep on the couch or made me a pile on the floor in the living room during that time. So you know, I went in the room that night. I was in there for a while again with the money, and then I stepped out. I laid down, in, you know, laid down my normal thing I do at nighttime on the couch and got up and did the normal routine of going to work. So you went to work the day after you found your daughter dead and you went to the, the yeah. uh, first job? Yes. And did you come home that, that day from your first job? Yes. And was, was Amani still in her room? When you got home that afternoon? Yes, until I moved. Okay, so tell me what you did with her when you got home from your first job the day after she had died. I moved her to the computer room. Did you? Back up in the blank. You moved her into the computer room? Yes, sir. And then you went to your second job? Yes, sir. What did you, what did you do after you got home from your second job? Um, uh, every time I got from the second job, I'd go back in the, where I moved in the computer room, and I'd go in there, and I would go in there with the body. And what were you doing? Um, I was in there green. Where was Tiffany during all this time? Um, just doing the normal routine, cooking for the kids, watching TV. During that time, was she talking to you about what you need, what you, what you all needed to do about this? Um, I think during that time she was uh during the day, she was uh you know we might be doing the homeschool thing. Um, I don't know if I said anything about that, but the homeschool thing, okay, connect academy. Right. Uh, she would uh do her schoolwork to make it seem that like Imani was you know doing the, you know the schoolwork. At any point, did are you aware of whether or not she sent messages to Amani's teacher? I'm um, not aware of if she did or not. Do you know if the two little ones trick or treated on Halloween? Yes, they did. Um, matter of fact, I got a, I got a picture of, um, of them two um, dressed up. Do you know who took them trick or treating? Uh, I think she went with her sister. That's in my knowledge, I think she went with her sister. And where were you when you got the picture? I was at work. All right, so Halloween night, you come home from your second job. And what do you do then? Um, I, I do the same thing that I have been doing since since that uh, Monday, since that Tuesday. I mean, that same thing, going in there and going in the room. And... Um, um, she pushed me to, uh, you, know, to you know, get rid of the body. I'm, uh, I'm stalling because I'm, I'm not doing it. I went to the, I went to Walmart buying the thing, but I didn't go through, you know, I didn't go through it on that day. Why not? Didn't really want to do it. So on Friday, after th after the day after Halloween, mm -hmm. is that the day you finally decided? Something had to be done? Yeah. 
So was it in the morning or at afternoon? It was actually it was um it was morning, but it was late. I want to say like late at night, type like eleven or twelve o'clock. On the day after Halloween. Yeah. But weren't you at work on that day? <laughs> yeah. So you wouldn't have gotten home from work at eleven o'clock, would you? No, I think it was probably twelve or one. I know it was late. It had to be like one or two. Okay. And was Tiffany still awake then? Yes, yeah, she was awake then. Um, so when you went into the house, mm -hmm. what did you do? Um, on that day, I was trying to um, trying to get rid of the body. Um, I go to the computer room. She come in. Uh, she come in to help me. Then um, I get the body, take it back into her room, into uh, Imani's uh, bedroom. Take the body to Imani's bedroom. Uh, and wrap the blanket that she's wrapped in. Take the body out. Now, y'all, second, Imani okay. forgot one step. Okay. Um. Did you ever put duct tape on? Uh, I was about to get to that. <laughs> From that day, I was. You know, laying it out from my rabbit. So you put a, you put a blanket over her. Yeah. So she's already in the blanket. So I uh, take her to the room and you know and wrap her out the blanket. And um, you know, I'm, at that time, like I said, I'm not familiar with brick and mortars, but it done set in, and it was hard to bend the body, and that's where the duct tape came in involved in. And um, at that time. Uh, Tiffany's in there in the bedroom with me, uh, helping me do this. So, when you don't have to be familiar with rigor mortis. Okay. Did you have to? Did you have to force her legs to fold? Yes, sir. And did you and Tiffany do that together? Yes, sir. Um, did you have to sort of force her arms down by her side? Yes, sir. Um. And did you and Tiffany do that together? Yes, sir. Um, it seems like it would be difficult for one person to wrap duct tape around a little girl's body. How did that happen? Uh, that is very difficult. Did Tiffany help you with that? Yes, she did. Um, Amon, you, your daughter's been dead for three days now. Um... How difficult was it to get her folded up like that? Very, very much difficult. Were there sounds? Uh, kind of like, I guess, a, like cracking sound. I can't say, I don't know what to compare it to, what I'm saying. And after you got her duct taped together, what happened then? After that, she helps me, you know, because um, she, she's a lot more heavy than she was before. I put the, you know, put her in a uh, lawn bag. Um, where was the trash can at that point? The trash can was in the um, vehicle, the uh, trail bag. And did, w once you got Imani into the trash bag, what did you do then? Um, from that moment, um, I tied up the bag, the trash bag that, that she was in, and then I took another bag, and she took, I think Tiffany took the blankets and stuff that she had and put them on and other stuff. Now, the blankets came from where? The comforter. Her uh, comforter bed, her um, uh, blanket that she was wrapped into. Um, but whose bed was it? Uh, that was Imani. Was that bed... Um, soiled? Was it, I mean, was there, was there, was there, uh, where she had gone the bathroom in the bed? Yes. What did you do with the mattress? Um, I know, uh, Timmy said she had cleaned the mattress. Any point during this are you thought, thinking about that I need to call police? I need to do something? Yes. But you didn't. Why? I felt like I was already messed up. I go to a park, I think it's in Northfield, Bethesda Park. Whose idea was it to go to Bethesda Park? Um, I really didn't know. We were just driving. I was 
chief said, we got to bail. I didn't know where to go. I'm just driving at the time. And what's Tiffany telling you at this time? Just find a spot. At any point during this, are you thought, thinking about that I need to call police? I need to do something? Yes. But you didn't. Why? I felt like I was already messed up. So did you end up off a of satellite boulevard? Yeah, that was uh, before I got there. Um, I ended up driving all the way to Stone Mountain. Just, you know, just driving down on um, back roads. And what were you looking for? I said I was looking for, uh, I told her I was looking for a spot, but I really saw I didn't really want to do it. But um, I'm just saying that we just, I'm, I'm stalling, I'm just driving. And we all were in Stone Mountain, and I, that's how I ended up on satellite. So tell me where, and, and your other two kids are in the back, in the car? They're in the back seat. So you end up off the satellite, and where did you go there? Um, I know satellite is uh, real long. I ended up on the uh, uh, Swanee side of satellite. Um, it's, a, I think, a wildlife thing over there. And I ended up pulling the vehicle uh, in the wildlife and going up the little dirt road. Um, and we went a long trail and I ended up going into it like a wood area. Why'd you do that? Um, from that point, you know, I, I cut the car off. The keys is in the back seat. She's in the patent side. Um, I get out of the car, left the lights on, cut the car off. Um, uh, I popped the trunk. Uh, the trunk of the trailblazer. Um, I, I, I opened the thing, she got out the patent side. Um, I lifted the trash can out. Um, I opened the bag of, I opened the bag of uh, charcoal and poured it in the tin can. Um, in the, in the, yeah, the trash can, the tin can. And from that point, um, <coughs> she uh, she helped me open the bag up where you know my body you know wrapped up in duct tape. She helped me put her um, body in a um, tin can. Did you put her head up or head down? Uh, uh, head up. Did you have to force her into it? Uh, kind of, yeah. So not not really force her. You had to. Angle, um, I had to put it at an angle. After you put Imani in that garbage can, what did you do then? Um, I sprinkled some um, lighter fluid on, you know, on the body and um, on charcoal. And what? And then I, you know, I light, I took a charcoal and I lighted on it on um, fire and I dropped it in the uh, tin can. So did it start to burn? It started to flame real, um, real big. And I, so what were you doing at that point? Um, I was, I was standing out, and you know, I was standing, she was out there with me. Did y'all say it. anything, or would you just stand and watch the fire? Um, as I did, um, I, I couldn't, I, like, I really didn't, I turned back, I didn't watch it, and she said, I can't watch this. And it just burned. How long did you let it burn? Um, not that long. I'm gonna say I let it burn for about like maybe five minutes, and I put it out. Why? Because it wasn't it wasn't working in the way I thought it was supposed to work. And what did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous. You know, I'm thinking it's like cremation. I don't know anything about that. So you thought that you, you were going to reduce your daughter to ashes in yeah. that trash? Yeah, it didn't work like that. Right. So you put the fire on. How did you put the fire on? I smothered it. I took the, the tin can and, you know, it smothered the uh, fire. Right. So at this point, the can must be hot, right? It's, it's very hot. And did you did y'all wait for it to cool? Yeah. So how long were you there until it cooled off? Um. I want to say probably 15, maybe 30 minutes. I, I took the old, I had some old shirts back there in the truck. I took them, to, you know, to lift it up and put it in there. 
inside the back seat of the uh, 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 top, not the towel, but uh, Chevy Trailblazer. During this time, did Tiffany help you carry the can around? Um, Either out to where you set the fire or back? She had, no, she helped me uh, carry the body and put it in the uh, thing. Right. Did, did you see whether she ever touched the can? Um, no, I never seen if she touched the can or not. So you put the body of your daughter back in the trailblazer. Mm -hmm. And where did y'all go? I put it back in the car. At this point, it's probably 4 o'clock in the morning. It's about the time I'm about to go to work um, for the first job. So I, I took it back. She wanted me to bury it. I couldn't do it. So I put it back in the thing. Back in the thing. Back, back, I mean, back into the uh, car. Okay. Truck, I mean. So she wanted you to bury it right there where you were. And, and you put it back in the truck. And where did you go from there? From there, I took the, I had a body in the thing. I, I took her back home with the kids that was in the back seat. Took her back to the apartment. From there, I, I, I'm not sleeping. I didn't, I didn't sleep all night. It's about 4 o'clock now. I get ready to go to the first ship job. I get I, ready? What do you mean? I mean get dressed to get ready to go to the first ship job. I go. Right now, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm out of it. So I, I take the money body that's in the truck and take it with me to work at the first ship job. So you parked in a parking lot with the do with the body of your daughter in the yeah. back of your car? Yes, I did. I was out of it, sir. And when you went to when you went to work, did you finish that shift? Yes, I did. So when you left work that day, where did you go from there? I went to the uh, second shift job. And before I got to the second shift job, I went, when I went to the first shift job, um, I almost, um, my supervisor, um, her name is Creole Graham, she had pulled me to the side that day, and I almost told them that, you know, what had happened. Because she said, something wrong, this one, you're not, something, what's up with you? She had pulled me to the side by herself. And that time, I almost, you know, said what had, what happened at that moment, but I didn't. So I go to, go back to the house. I still got the thing. Well, well okay. where, when you got back to the house after this night long trip, mm -hmm. where was Tiffany? She was at the house. Um, did she seem upset? Did, was she just doing normal stuff? Doing normal stuff. Was she watching television? Yeah. So, you started to get ready, ready to go to the second job. And what happened then? Well, I go to the second job. Um, uh, I'm really out of it. Um, uh, I hit one of the co-workers on the Fort Lift. Uh, you know, I just bumped, well, I hit him, I bumped into him, because right now at that time, I'm, I'm really out of it. Uh, like I said, I'm just kabobulated, devastated, grieving. And I messed up. So at, at Avery, this is uh, Avery, and I'm calling uh, Rudy. And uh, I, I was like, I'm about to get off. It was like, I think it was at the time I actually got off a little early. It was like, well, it was almost not really early, about 12, 50, something, almost 1 o'clock. I get off and I asked, can you meet me? He was like, yeah, he met me at the QT. Is that near your apartment? Um, or is no, it it's actually near the Avery. It was a QT off, uh, I can't remember, River Park, Riverside Park. I think that's the name of the road, Riverside Park. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I believe it. Okay. So you um, and, oh, I was, met Rudy at the quick trip. And because, like I said, what I, everything that I just explained and went through, now it's eating me at the core. So I called Rudy, and um, and he like, you, you sound weird. What you talking about? Right? I just need somebody to talk to. Uh, he meet me at a QT, uh, and he get in the car with me. And um, like I said, I'm I'm out of it. I, I just go and tell him I like I, I got him mind. She's dead. 
that she in the back seat. And he's like, wait, 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 get me out of this car. He made me stop the vehicle. Because I was riding around in the parking lot near the uh, QT. I think it was a Kroger's or whatnot. Okay. okay. Mr. Mr. Boss, hang on a second. We can't, okay. we can't talk about what Rudy told you, but I want to ask you some questions. Okay. All right? Did you... We're going to need to find a spot for a morning break here pretty soon. Let me know when there's a good transition spot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I'll be done in just 10 questions. I know lawyers tell you that all the time, but I, I, I promise 10. Um... Did you tell your best friend, Rudy, your cousin, did yeah. you tell him what had happened with Amani, this, all this that you had just described to the jury? Yeah, and I, I didn't go into full detail. I just told him that she did and da 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 I did something stupid. And what did Rudy tell you to do? Call 911. And did you call 911 right there from the court trip? Yes, I, I left and got to the house, to my house and called 911. And before, uh, okay, go ahead. Before you, before I called, now I went, uh, went, I went back to the house. To tell me, I'm like, man, we this ain't right. We gotta call nine one one. And she was like, no, 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 no. I'm like, we gotta call nine one one. So, did you take? So did you? What did she do when you told her you're calling nine one one? What did she do? She get the keys ready. She get them dressed. She get dressed. She get in the car. Um, I think she got the trash can because the trash can wasn't in the car anymore. And she got in the car and she drove off to her mother's house. At that time, I got called nine one one. And what? You called nine one one at that point. Yes. And then the police arrived. Yeah, right. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Moss, will you have any cross-examination questions? No questions. All right. Sir, you can step down. Thank you very much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm informed you have a verdict. Is that correct? Correct. Is it unanimous? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Has it been signed by your foreperson? It has. Please give it to the bailiff.